ladies and gentlemen, Bolt Matrix here, and today we are going to be taking a look at probably one of the most frustrating figures I've gotten a hold of in a long time. Today we are going to be taking a look at a Transformers Studio Series Deluxe Class Shatter. Now Shatter here is the first female Studio Series figure, and probably one of the first female, or I should say good, female Transformers we've gotten in the movie-verse. She hails from the Bumblebee movie, which was released in December of 2018. This figure comes to me from my good friend Grimlockamus, customizer extraordinaire. He picked Shatter up for me at retail and then shipped it my way. And that was like a month and a half, two months ago. Why am I so bad at this still? Now, Shatter being a deluxe class figure is roughly the same size as Studio Series Bumblebee. I'm not going to actually compare that to the Bumblebee figure, because quite frankly I can't find Bumblebee, but it's around here somewhere. The figure is molded in primarily silver, black, and red, and looks okay in robot mode, though it has one chunky backpack. Probably the chunkiest backpack of any figure I've seen in a while. Okay, that's, that's not true. Let's face it, the Studio Series is really well known for having big arse backpacks. The biggest detriment to the figure in robot mode are the giant panels that hang off the sides of the, well, thighs, and the fact that the head sculpt is, I mean, let's face it, this is a very, very bland head sculpt. There's not much going on here. In fact, I would have to say that the head sculpt is just boring. Posability for the figure is okay, though it is severely hampered by the giant weight in the backpack. Head is on a ball joint and can move all around. Shoulders are on ball joints and move freely, for the most part. The wheels on the back of the shoulders do get in the way. Swivels at the upper elbow. Yeah. Swivels above the elbow, elbows are on ratchets and bend 90 degrees, and then the hands, well, they can't move because of the guns, which do come off and peg into anything that can support a little peg, like a Siege class figure, for instance. That is if the Siege class figure's peg and arm are very, very skinny. There is no torso articulation due to the transformation, and then there are, then there are ball joints in the hips, swivels at the lower thigh, just above the knee, bend at the knee 90 degrees, then there is a secondary knee that allows for more bend, that's part of the transformation. Then there is ankle pivots forward and back that allow for quite a bit of posability in the ankles, forward and back, but no side to side, unfortunately. Now, the figure does suffer greatly in a couple of key spots. Speaking of which, are the shoulders. The shoulder ball joints just pop off way, way too easily. Far too easily for any Transformer in the modern age. Some Pledge can fix that though. I just haven't applied it yet. And then there are these little bits on the back that fold up above the shoulders. They're the, they're the wheel wells and the upper parts of the hood of the car mode. They just fall off. They just, they just flat out fall off. There's very little friction holding them in, and they just collapse and slide out of place, but they slide back on pretty easily. Though, yeah, it's hammer, it's hammer worthy. These popping arms and these falling off bits are, I feel like I wanna just smash it with a hammer, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to. I'm controlling my rage. Moving on to the figure's transformation. The tra I'll, I'll be honest, the transformation is infuriating. This, this figure's transformation is absolutely infuriating. I, I don't like it. I do not like this transformation. I do not like it, Sam I am. The car mode that we end up with is actually pretty decent looking, but the amount of robot kibble underneath is just disgusting. It's so viewable, it's unfun. Much like my ugly mug, it is very unpleasant to look at. There are things that could be solved with the car mode. I do appreciate the fact that it is lifted up like in the movie, but it's not a fun car mode. It tends to pop out of place, and the panels pop apart way too easily for my taste. And as you saw, the transformation, getting this thing into vehicle mode, is such a bloody nightmare. It's worse than a masterpiece, and even if you know how this thing transforms, it's not fun. It is not a fun transformation. Unlike Dropkick. Dropkick, while it is a little bit of a pain in the butt, is a fun transformation. 
Transformation back into robot mode is significantly easier because you don't have to worry about anything like panels clicking into place. However, parts are going to fall off. The shoulders are going to fall off. The panels that are the front sides of the vehicle mode are going to fall off. Let them. Just let them fall off, get everything into place, and then just put them back on. That's the frustration-free way of getting it back into robot mode. And then once again, you're left with a robot mode that's okay. It's just okay. There are a lot better Studio Series figures out there. In fact, most Studio Series figures are better than this, except Bumblebee. Don't get that first Bumblebee. At the end of the day, I really can't recommend Shatter. It's an okay attempt. It really just feels like an attempt. And it's weird because we've got this figure, but we don't have her in her jet mode yet. I wouldn't bother with getting Shatter. Instead, I would head over to Big Bad Toy Store and pick up either Voyager Class Optimus Prime or Voyager Class Rampage. Both of these are awesome in their own ways. I like Rampage more because, I mean, he's a murder bull, angry murder bulldozer pogo man. How can you not love something that stupid? And Prime is great in robot mode. Vehicle mode, not so much. That's it's gonna be its own review. So yeah, pick up either one of these two as opposed to Shatter. Yes, they're more expensive. Not gonna lie about that. But I think they are much better figures than her. Anywho, thank you so much for watching this video review. Please let me know, do you like this new format? I wanted to try something different, and I thought Shatter would could be a good contender. I've got a green screen going, I've got better lighting, I've got a couple of ideas of the way I would like to take video reviews going forward, and that involves me being in front of the camera a little bit more than usual. So, yeah, let me know what you think. Did you like this review? Did you not like this review? Do you like Shatter? Do you not like Shatter? Let me know down in the comments. As always, be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons to follow me here on this channel, and be sure to hit that bell so you know when a new video is out. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, yeah, and follow me on Twitter, too. Again, thank you so much for watching this video review. I've been Ball Matrix. I'll catch you next time, hopefully with a better figure.